So, it was 2014. I received my master's degree in marketing management and came to the conclusion that I wanted to become a programmer. Now, with zero programming skills, I eventually became one. But, to be honest, it was pretty hard. And I often ask myself, if I could start all over with programming, how would I do it? And that is exactly what this video is about. I will tell you what in my opinion is the fastest way to become a software developer. And throughout this video, I will also tell you the most used mistake that every beginning software developer makes. I will tell you a huge tip which I wish I knew way earlier. And I'll also tell you which mindset you need to have to become successful in your coding journey. All right, now let's cut the crap and dive straight into it. If you start Googling a bit into this beautiful world of programming, you get overloaded with all these programming languages and all these concepts. Next to this, there are also different types of developers, each with their own specialized skill set and responsibilities. To be honest, back in the days, I got really overloaded with all of this and I had no idea where to start. So I was switching from one programming language to the other and from learning one library or framework to the other. And as a result, I wasted a lot of time because I simply didn't use my time effectively enough. So that leads me to the first important point and that is adding a little bit of focus. For this reason, I would suggest to start with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now maybe you think why? Well, I come back to this in a moment. But first, without diving into too much details, with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you can build websites like a portfolio website, for instance. Now, the nice thing about this is that you immediately see what you are building from a visual perspective, which makes it, in my opinion, more fun. And at the same time, you start getting familiar with a lot of programming concepts like variables, data types, operators, conditionals, functions, etc. Now, Understanding these concepts will be helpful when you start learning other programming languages in the future. I mean, your first language will never be your last. Now, after you are getting more and more comfortable with HTML, CSS and JavaScript, it's time to add a little bit of flavor on top of it. So I would suggest to start learning React. React is a popular JavaScript library that is used for building user interfaces. Learning React will be much easier since you are already familiar with HTML, CSS and JavaScript at this point in time. So during this part of our journey, we focused on building frontends, the visual stuff. And at the same time, we are also getting familiar with a lot of programming concepts and fundamentals. But there is more than just a frontend. A lot of applications also have a backend. For instance, when you log into Instagram, you type in your username and password, you click login, and then a lot of stuff happens behind the scenes. Like, we need to check against the database of users if the username and password is correct. And based on that, we send back a result. So it's time to add more flavor to our skill set. For this reason, I would suggest to start learning Node.js. Now, without diving into too much details, Node.js is a runtime environment for executing JavaScript code outside a browser. And in short, this allows us to build the backend of an application in JavaScript. So when you start coding backends in Node.js, you learn about other concepts like HTTP methods, databases, APIs, etc. Now, the advantage of this learning path is that we mainly focus on JavaScript, which allows us to build both our frontend and backend. And as a result, we are learning a lot of programming concepts and programming fundamentals with just one language called JavaScript. In my opinion, becoming familiar with the concepts and fundamentals is more important than learning multiple languages. Once we understand them, learning another language becomes much easier. Next to this, a pod like this also helps you to figure out a bit where your passion lies. Maybe this is purely front-end or purely back-end, but it can also be both. Now, of course, this is just the beginning and there is so much more to learn. However, this learning path provides a solid foundation. And if I could start all over, this is how I would begin. So what is the best way to learn all of this? 
Well, there are a lot of great ways to learn all of this. You can for instance go to Udemy and for a pretty decent price you can find some great courses. I mean, I even bought a few of them myself. But if you are short on cash, don't sweat it. There are also a bunch of amazing free courses on YouTube. But here's the biggest mistake I see beginners make. They basically watch these courses like they are bincing the latest Netflix documentary. Sure, you might feel that you are making progress, but are you really? The truth is, you only truly learn coding by doing it. When you're coding, you're going to make mistakes. Trust me, we all do. But that's okay, because it's through these mistakes that you learn the most. You figure out where you did wrong or what you did wrong and you learn how to fix it. And hey, if you get really stuck, you can always ask ChatGPT for help. So here's my advice. Don't just watch these tutorials. Copy them line for line. If something doesn't work, don't give up. Google it, ask ChatGPT, do whatever it takes to find a solution. It might take longer to finish the course, but trust me, you will learn so much more this way. And once you finish the course, you should try starting a fun little hobby project to apply your new skills. Oh, and one more thing, once you are feeling pretty confident in your coding abilities, be sure to check out this book, Clean Code. It's a great read that teaches you how to write clean code, which is, in my opinion, extremely important. All right, so now we know that the best way to learn coding is by simply doing it. But let me share a tip with you that could really boost your learning curve. And if I could turn back the time, I would have definitely done this. But unfortunately, back then I wasn't aware of this. So yeah, here it is. And I hope it will really benefit you. The tip is share to others what you are learning. Yes, you heard me right. When you teach someone else what you are learning, you learn even more. Now, this is backed up by Barbara Oakley's book, A Mind for Numbers. This one right here. And in this book, Barbara Oakley emphasizes the importance of teaching as a tool for enhancing your understanding of the material. But that's not all. If you follow my channel, you know that I also created a few programming tutorials. And to be honest, it really enhanced my understanding of the material. But it also helped me to identify my strengths and weaknesses on that topic. I mean, you may think you've mastered the topic, but when you try to explain it to someone else, you realize that there are a few spots you don't understand as well as you thought. And by diving into these weak spots, you understand the topic even better. Now next to this, there's another bonus, sharing what you've learned can benefit you in the long run. I mean, you can add it to your resume, which will probably impress potential employers, but you may even get lucky and earn some extra income from it. Just like this guy who created a YouTube channel around this whole coding journey, and he now has a successful channel. So you never know what the sharing of knowledge leads you to. But if you don't want to create tutorials or blog posts, that's perfectly fine. I mean, it has to be something that you enjoy. So if you don't enjoy it, that's okay. But you can still share your code or code related stuff on GitHub. This also allows potential employers to see your skills. And next to this, it can be a great way to learn about version control with Git, which is another important skill for software developers. So you see, sharing what you have learned can be a win-win situation. You are extracting more value from the skill that you are already learning. And that is the main point that I want to make. So don't miss out on this powerful tool. I mean, I wish I knew this earlier. All right, so far we have talked about the learning path that you should learn coding by doing it and that you should share what you have learned. But let me be honest, becoming a skilled programmer is pretty hard. Now, you are probably way smarter than me and you will learn all this stuff way faster. But there is one important thing, and that is your mindset. Programming is a job of continuously learning. I mean, technologies change, frameworks change. This field is constantly evolving. And as a result, there is so much to learn. And yeah, it is impossible to know everything. So don't expect that from yourself. 
focus on the fun of learning, building your skills and sharing your progress with others. This will help you build your resume and stand out when applying for jobs. Once you land your first programming job, you learn a lot from your colleagues. But don't try to compare yourself too much with others. I mean, most programmers are pretty intelligent people, in my opinion. So, it's very easy to develop this imposter syndrome. I mean, I work and have been working with some very intelligent and skilled programmers. And, to be honest, sometimes I think, damn, I'm a loser. They know just way more than me. What am I doing here? But they may have the same thoughts every now and then, or maybe not, but fuck it, everyone learns at their own pace. So just focus on the fun, don't give up, and keep coding. Now if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like it, and maybe subscribe to the channel. Click it. <laughs> Alright, I'm joking. i see you in the next video.